think the important thing is that people don't think that anything's going to happen to them. No. And, and so they think, oh, I don't have to worry about planning for that because that's like, it's like, you know, I live in Las Vegas. So yes, once in a while, we'll have an earthquake, a little bit of a shake here. And it usually happens in California. It trembles over here. Uh, once in a while, we've had a drought, obviously, for years now. Uh, we, we've had some flash flooding that's caused some problems. And we've had a few fires. But most of the people within the proper of Las Vegas don't believe that they have to worry about it. Well, the bottom line is, we are impacted no matter where the disaster is. We're impacted financially, we're impacted FEMA. So in 2019, the average cost, uh, if you looked at from 19, 1980 to 2019, the average cost for disasters, uh, uh, weather disasters, not earthquakes, not man-made, just weather-related disasters uh, that were a billion dollars or more was $46.8 billion per year. 2020, it was $126.8 billion per year. Do you know what it was for 2021? $145.1 billion. Now you add the pandemic to that, you add, oh, and another very interesting statistic, cyber attacks. So when I was writing the training in 2019, I looked up a, a, the statistic and it said that over the next five years, uh, we're going to experience $7.1 trillion dollars as a cost from cyber attacks. Guess what, 2021, it was $7.1 trillion, $7 trillion. Looks in like years. in both those cases, the frequency is just, you know, increasing exponentially, right? Absolutely. Uh, and it's, it, there's no end in, uh, end in sight. So truly crisis proportions. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I, I wanna change course here and um, I wanna talk a little bit about, you are a, you are, well, you were, and you still do some forecasting, a chief economist for the California Association of Realtors. And this new man in your life was the National Association of Realtors chief economist. So uh, there's a little bit of economics going on in your household, I believe. Yes. Uh, um, one of the things that um, I try to stress to people, and especially people in the real estate industry, is that how important it is for them to be aware of what is happening in our country and in our world and the economic impact that it has on our business. Uh, and one of the things when, when I was writing the course on insurance and I just updated that portion of the course, I was reading something and it was very, very scary. Uh, there are reinsurers out there that are now saying that homes could become uninsurable in the future. And when we have we have places right now where you can't find insurance or you have to go through the fair plan or something like that. Right. Um, talk a little bit about the economic consequences of natural as well as man-made disasters on the real estate industry. Well, currently um, a little less than half, about 43% of the homes in the United States are at high or very high risk of damage from natural disasters. So this is not something that's going to happen somewhere else away from me. You know, when you look at, and let's just take the big picture, you know, drought, hurricanes, flood, fire, tornadoes, um, earthquakes, it's coming from all quarters. And as we've established, the frequency um, in some of these cases is getting very, very, <laughs> very, very high frequency, right? And so it's something you really need to be aware of in terms of um, investing um, in, in your home, uh, what kind of things could you do to kind of mitigate some of these um, issues, but when you're buying a home, understanding what the insurance availability um, is and what the cost is, because there's, you know, there's national flood insurance, because why, you, you really need to spread um, spread the risk. And unfortunately, as things are happening more frequently, it's hard to find a pool that ensure that the private sector finds attractive, right? Because, you know, all of a sudden, yeah, you don't get, you know, hurricanes up in New York until you have Hurricane Sandy, you know, so it's, um, um, it's really a challenge. And then when you look at the data, the, um, the safe homes in safer areas are appreciating at a much higher rate than the homes in the um, at risk um, areas in part because of the cost of this 
um, insurance. So I think it's raising a lot of questions going forward that is really going to reach a, it's going to be tough, right? Because we need more affordable housing. And that's really the sad part when you look at places like Paradise uh, in California, where people went there because it was more affordable. The Bay Area is very expensive. Sacramento had gotten expensive for some of these families. And yet here they are right in the middle of a um, firestorm. So just from an economic perspective, it's very costly to mitigate the impact of these um, un unpredictable but expected um, expected um, events. And I think, you know, as you look at the migration patterns over the last two years with the pandemic, where it's like work from home, work from anywhere, and, and parts of the country that weren't um, that desirable are looking much more <laughs> much desirable because they have um, affordable housing. I think that's going to be, um, you know, the, the, the natural disasters is just going to feed um, into that as well. But to a certain extent, there's really nowhere to hide, right? That, that it, it, it truly is everywhere. So I think your approach is be realistic and plan and understand what the costs um, are going to be because you don't want to invest in this wonderful opportunity to own a home and have it go up in flames and be left with um, with nothing. You know, you've you've really got to plan that into the decision that you're making and where you're going to be living. Well, I, I think it's uh, that, that's such a good point. Like, so for example, let's talk about tornadoes. It used to be tornadoes. We're in Tornado Alley. You know, upper part right. of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, latter, smaller, a short, smaller part of Nebraska and then on over east. Now, I mean, just two weeks ago, there was a tornado in January in Florida. Yes. <laughs> and I think that that is the part that people don't understand. It's like it's like the drought. So when I was looking at the drought maps, I every month I provide a course or a training that the real estate community could take out to their communities and educate their civic organizations, churches, and that sort of thing. And I was writing one on tornadoes and storms. And I looked at the, at the updated maps and it really, and then you take a look at the drought and the drought, I mean, it started out was primarily the West Coast, California, Oregon, Washington. Last year, it went all the way across the United States to North Dakota. And what happened? The fires then went all the way across to North Dakota and all the way through Texas. So what you're seeing is there is no safe place anymore. And, and the cost factor is just growing by leaps and bounds with the extremes that we're having. Just stunning numbers. The, yeah, the Even numbers on the other are, side, other side of the coin, you know, in Florida, out in the, the Keys, you know, the water's been rising and there are people that are living um, on these, um, you know, small, uh, islands that need their roads rebuilt, you know, lifted up and their houses lifted up. And they're looking to um, the government, you know, to to fund that. And it really becomes a public policy um, issue is how much of this is going to be paid for um, out of um, out of public funds and how much of it is the responsibility of homeowners that maybe bought this land and this home on this I, um, island, you know, 40 years ago when this wasn't um, wasn't an issue. So this is only going to grow in terms of its importance to to everyone. Oh, absolutely. Well, and one of the statistics that really got me was at, at the sustainability summit was if we do not change and start reducing our carbon footprint. By 2030, yeah. that's eight years, eight years. If we don't start reducing that, it could be irreversible. Yeah. And even if we do reverse it, it's going to take 25 years or more to offset the damage that's already been done. So my grandkids, my great grandchild is going to be experiencing this as an adult. And uh, so it's really I get really passionate about it because it's like, OK, I want to take some people and just shake them and say, hey, wake up. This is important. And, and you have to slap them in the doll in their pocketbook, right? Well, people don't understand what it's costing already. I mean, power outages last year, they, they were up around $5 billion cost in just power outages. And it's like, okay, so that's affecting everybody. Uh, if you take a look at just about any kind, of, it costs us an average of over $5 billion a year for nuclear power plant incidents. Over 5 billion a year. And you take that and you add that to the natural disasters and the 
uh, the other types of disasters like the mass shootings and the deaths and all that. Pretty soon that number becomes a trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. And so we can't just sit back and say, oh, well, it's not affecting me. I'm not going to have, you know, I'm not going to have a disaster hurricane at my house. I'm living in Las Vegas, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, well, I'm, this is going to be going out to a lot of real estate agents and brokerages. So what would be a good piece of advice that you could give to them that they could maybe take to their community um, and in regards to the economics of what's happening? You know, I think it's, it's all about local, uh, local information and finding out kind of what, um, what the weak parts are, where the vulnerabilities are, what the insurance market looks like. I think, um, uh, I guess this is, uh, you know, maybe a shameless plug, but I think the certification that you've come up with Connie is really just brilliant uh, in terms of really digging down and becoming an, an, an expert in this because clients need to know, right? Um, so I, I think that's that would be my advice, you know, be, be aware. And I think most realtors are, uh, but, but study it and have the data available for uh, existing homeowners and for clients um, that are looking in that area so that they can prepare themselves and, and understand what what might lie ahead. I, I think you're absolutely right. And I also think that this is an opportunity. You know, I always talk about crystalline moments, crystalline meaning sparkly or clear, some moments of clarity. Disasters of any kind are crystalline moments and there's always a gift or opportunity. And when it comes to the real estate professional, there is a particular opportunity for them to become the superheroes in their communities and, ha and help their communities shine. If they just look at their own insurance policy and say, okay, what have I got? And what are the other things that are out there? What, what, you know, what might they, my client need to have and say, look, you know, here's an insurance agent. If you don't have one in the area or here, go talk to your insurance agent and make sure you've got the right kind of coverage on your home. Because I, I, the number is astronomical. It's something like 60% or 70% of homes are underinsured. Right. Right. And so no, as an insure, as a real estate professional going out there and being able to say, hey, this is something you need to look at. This is These are the risk factors in this particular area. This is what you can do to mitigate against them. Uh, being able to go out and train your community on being prepared. You know, how many disaster kits do you really need to have? A minimum of four. Those types of things that you can take to your community that will make you shine and, and really stand out. So who are they going to call when it comes time for their real estate needs? Right, 100%. And the person that can be there in a crisis... Um, which I think we've we've kind of commented on that people aren't really going to take things seriously until it uh, impacts them. And as that becomes increasingly likely, it's the person that has the plan and the information that's really going to be of value and of service to that group. So I'm, I'm really so glad that you couch this in terms of the crystalline moment, the fact that don't waste a crisis, you know, really right. make this an opportunity for, for positive and um, and meaningful, um, meaningful change. Because when you look at, you know, over 35 million properties in the United States are in that vulnerable category, that's a, that's a lot of housing, right? And that's a lot of households that are, that could possibly be, um, be disruptive. So I would, you know, I would flip this around and say, what an amazing opportunity uh, to make a difference in your community. Absolutely. All right. Well, I am going to put it one shameless plug for the book. <laughs> When the Unthinkable Happens, Be Prepared, Be Ready is launching the 17th. And this is going to be airing on the 17th. So it's launch day. And the, the beauty of it, I wrote this book as a guide, a simple guide of where to start, whether you have a small business, whether you you're individually, of what you need to do to start with. And as a real estate professional, you have the opportunity, you can put your chapter in the book and use it as a great marketing tool. So that's my plug. There you go. <laughs> that's, that's a perfect segue, Connie. What a great, great suggestion. So, well, Leslie, you know, I love talking to you all the time. And I just, I just, it, you're just a joy. So thank you so much for being a part of my life. Thank you for asking me. It's just been a real, a real pleasure to be on with you today, Connie. All right, everybody. I will be back with another amazing interview with my Kick Butt Leadership Series. Talk to you soon. <laughs>